Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to yet another week of downshift racing. This week we are using the Peugeot 908 HDI FAP, the 2010 variant of the car. And this was going to be a very interesting week. Uh, it was, I'll be first to say that this is actually going to be a little bit of a shorter episode considering that I'm only here for Tuesday and Thursday. I'll get to uh, what happened on Sunday a little bit later. But for the Tuesday race, we are here again, Peugeot 908 HDI FAP 2010 on Alsace. And man, oh man, this was going to be a fun one. So this is of my spec series, I should note that uh, this is the first time in the spec series that we're actually using group one cars and it just kind of we're practicing for our thursday races and our sunday races and then all of a sudden tuesday comes around it's like oh we're in group one now on alsace so a little bit unexpected didn't have a whole lot of time to practice but it was so fun i mean this first part as you can see i had let people in the first corner and then just slowly lose positions go to due to going wide and very shortly in the first lap i'm down to seventh out of eighth people and i'm going well that was not ideal but as you know the first lap jitters goes i slowly start making my places up and throughout all this i'm having some very very quick battles very close battles with a lot of different people here and this this race was awesome because of that. I was super concerned that because we were going from like 600 horsepower, 700 power point limit vehicles from Sunday race, uh, all of a sudden jumping up to like 700, 800 horsepower, 900 power point limit vehicles that we would just like be at our wits end and we we're just, you know, constantly colliding with everything. For a lot of this race, this car felt ultra fast. I was super concerned that I would just have some really rookie mistakes and just go way too deep, misjudge a braking point, or put on the power way too quickly, or just understeer like crazy. Because these cars, they have so much power, and weirdly enough, not a whole lot of grip. So you find yourself either spinning out quite a bit, or you're just... You're on the power too much through a corner, thinking you can have a little bit higher grip than you actually do, and then suddenly you find yourself in the grass because you just misjudged it completely. And like I said, uh, fortunately, we had done collectively enough practice where that was fortunately not that big of an issue. Again, first lap, second lap jitters hit us. There are a lot of you know penalties going on, going on, a lot of people falling off the course, a lot of places being met up. But finally, at, by lap three, we're starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm here. I'm sitting in about fifth place. I'm having, for the next lot of laps, I'm having some very close battles with Flanders. So finally, we have a moment in lap six, actually. I do want to preface before getting into this incident that there are a ton of battles that I had here. And I wish I could cover each and every one of them. But if I were to cover each battle that I had here, the episode would be longer than the race itself. And it's just every single lap, there was a new battle with a new player. And we were just going deep. We were driving hard. We were keeping it nice and clean. And this was an incredibly gratifying race because it was just everybody was, you know, talking in the voice chat. And we we're running high on adrenaline, but it was still close, but fair and friendly competition. It was amazing. So when we get to this incident in about lap six here, I am finally starting to catch up the order. I'm now in fourth place out of eight. So I've made up quite a few places here. And coming into this chicane here, the infamous, rather second chicane, because it's got a, a radius that is ever evolving you start in going a little bit shallow and then somehow in the middle of the corner you start have to either get off the gas or start braking sooner you have to turn in even harder so it's a really difficult chicane and we've got shio here misjudges it completely does not leave shane enough room runs him wide runs him into the wall shane gets a penalty and shio's on the intercoms going Oh my god, I am so sorry. I completely screwed that corner up. So by the time I get up to him, I give him a little bit of friendly tap, kind of like how you you know slap your son in the back of the head saying, Hey, what the hell are you thinking there, man? <laughs> 
So I gave him a little bit of smack and go along my way. But short, shortly thereafter, it was very much so that uh, Shane and Chio were just on another level today. They were able to just fly on by with not too many issues from me. And yeah, I was I was back down to fourth. Well, I should really say I was back down to fifth. But in this instant, it was kind of unclear who would actually take this position because for the next couple of laps, there was some insanely good battling with Flanders here. There are some corners that I'd be able to just dive in on the deep end, and then there are other times where he'd just be able to fly out on the outside and not have too many issues. And then a couple of corners later, I'd be able to make it up, and then he'd make it up. So we are just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then finally, it appears that on... Lap 7, same chicane that we had issues before. Shio no longer has a car to bounce off of to make his corner, and he hits the wall, and then he spins out, gets a penalty, and just has... It's just left in the dust, and that was the end of his race, unfortunately. But because of this uh, issue that Shio has, then Flanders and myself are promoted to 3rd and 4th, respectively. And then for the next couple of laps, we keep on having some more fights, more fights, more fights... And then Shane shows up in about lap 8, which was really cool because, as you guys have seen before, whenever Shane is involved, I am like a magnet to another magnet. We're just always attracted to one another, and we always end up with a snap of a collision. And I was bound and determined to be competitive but to not hit Shane because, oh my goodness, the amount of times that I've had some really dumb mistakes around him, I am still really agitated at myself for some of these. So we're having some good fights. Flanders has a little bit of a screw up in lap eight where Shane and myself are able to get in front. We're still, again, with... But Flanders isn't out of the, out of the mix yet. He comes back with a vengeance. And again, some more fights. We're just swapping positions swapping positions and then we get to one of my favorite parts of the, of the course now this part here is i during time trials i was super hesitant i couldn't figure out you know what gear i should be in i was riding the high fours and fourth gear and then finally when we get to the qualifying run i'm realizing that this really long banked corner you can actually ride it in like mid revs fifth gear and you can basically keep on the power the entire time. There's a couple of spots where we want to just lightly lift it, but it is super gratifying and Flanders is an incredibly quick driver, but he didn't have that corner figured out, which was really fun to see where it's like, ha, I have something on you for once. <laughs> so during qualifying, he's like, Wesby, how are you doing this? So eventually we come into this bank corner we're going about too wide, and he starts going wide. But funny enough, I'm going wide too, and eventually he hits the grass before I hit him. He hits the wall, and he spins out, and yellow flag was thrown out. And at this point, you know, she, uh, Shane and myself were able to pass through without having to do any reduced speed or anything. We just fall out of the yellow flag zone and just off and racing we go. But at this moment, it is still not over because shortly after Flanders having his incident, then Omar comes back into the mix, and now it's a three-way battle for second place. Paven, as always, has the lines, has done some decent practicing, has some insane lap times, and I'm actually feeling pretty good because I'm only a second or two off of his lap time, but if you look at my overall lap times they're kind of all over the place because of all the fighting that i've been doing i happen to be able to focus on my lap times i've been busy fighting people trying to keep position that i am trying to figure out how to have the most optimal lap time so omar is thrown back into the mix and not very long after he makes that play for second place and he's got those when he doesn't fall off the course and get a penalty he is super fast, and he manages to make that pass for second place stick, and he just starts going off into the distance. Shane and myself are now having some very close battling for third place, and this is going on for lap and 
at lap after lap, lap after lap, lap after lap. Just every single corner, we're trying to get the leg up from the next person, trying to make these dives work. And again, through all of it, I'm keeping it clean. I have, like, there might have been a couple of times where we have, you know, we're bumping doors a little bit, but the two of us are being respectful. We're giving each other some space when we need it. And it is just absolutely epic. I was, I'm still astounded to this day the incredible racecraft we both had and the ability that we both had to not shove it into one each other and and spin each other out. I'm still incredibly happy how this all turned out. It was an awesome, awesome race. And then we get to the final lap. We are still battling hard for third. Omar is out into the distance. As always, I'm hoping that he maybe makes a mistake and then we're able to have a second and third place podium for Shane and myself. But again, Omar just had it figured out at that point. So now Shane and myself are starting to realize the gravity of okay let's see if we can make our position stick and see if we can get our podium place on your left (laughs) dude if we get if we get omar to screw up then we both get podium that's what i'm oh yep there we go there we go there we go oh are we going to do this too wide? Hell yeah, we are. Oh, no, no, we're not. That's, I'm f***ing up is what I'm doing. Ah. Uh, oh. So again, Shane and myself are fighting on this last lap. To allow space for Shane, I go a little bit down low on the bank corner, and my dirty tires grab some more dirt, and I get, I lose it. At this point, when I lose it, I send it into the wall. I get a second and a half penalty. But I think Shane seeing my issues focusing on me was losing focus on his line and has an absolutely dramatic spin out just up ahead of me. So I'm sitting there going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I can do this, I can do this. I pass in front of him, but he's able to recover so quickly. I was not able to make up the gap though. It's my second and a half penalty. I needed to be more than that out ahead of him, but he was able to recover faster than I was and was able to end the race with about seven tenths worth of time in between me and him. So he's able to get promoted to third place. Again, amazing battle. And it just, wow, 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 wow. I want to remember this race for a long time. I didn't win, I didn't even get a podium, but man. Everybody was on their A game, and it was just special. I think I can say that definitively. That race was special. But you know what wasn't a special race was this Thursday Group B race. So, uh, for reasons beyond my own comprehension, I completely forgot to really practice this track a whole lot. And because I was busy making the F124 video, like, right before qualifying I had like zero practice on this whatsoever I did a little bit after our last Thursday race and earlier in the day I was doing the Ferrari challenge mission when you were racing as the Ferrari FXXK on Monza so like it's a track I know well and it's a car that I know well so you would think at some point that the two of them would just kind of click together and it kind of did, but I'm going to be honest, if I had some more practice, this would have helped quite a bit because for a reason, I'm not sure, these track limits were killing me this race. Most other courses, they're a little bit liberal where they're like, yeah, they'll have like one or two corners that have like you put your wheels over. We're like, okay, yeah, we'll worry about those, but the rest of the course is fine. It felt like every corner was trying to kill me in this race. So, because I didn't have any practice or whatever, I qualify what would have been ninth out of 11, but then we had reverse grid order in effect. So I actually started in third, and I'm hoping that I can use that to my advantage, hoping that I can 
drive defensively and just have some pretty good racing lines through, hoping that I'm not going to do anything stupid. But we all know how that goes. I always do something stupid. You just you can almost put a clock to it where it's like, oh, there it goes Westby again. <laughs> so Magnum's got a little bit of problem. He operates himself. Junior sees it and is able to stay it out of his way. Uh, Magnum goes into the barriers in the second chicane, and I'm able to get promoted up into second. So I'm I'm feeling pretty good about this. And as the lap goes on, I'm keeping people behind. People aren't getting too close, so I'm pretty okay with this until it was the very next lap on lap two when the penalties started to roll in. And for whichever reason, it is turn seven that wants me. Because it's just for, again, it's you're taking the corner, corner like you normally would. And yeah, you put your wheels up on the curb, not a big deal. But apparently I, due to my lack of practice, had been cutting it closer and closer and closer where apparently I'm cutting it close enough where even though I'm not all four wheels over the white line, it's still counting me as that. And even Rain was talking about that during qualifying where he's just like, oh, you're so you're, you're going to penalize me for driving the line. Okay, that's cool. So it gets me on lap two, and it gets me on lap four, because I'm now trying to account for that, and I actually go wide. And then I get another penalty for the second chicane at lap six, where uh, Gotta Go has this issue where he, like, again, outbreaks himself, he goes out. But instead of just letting them drive through it, they respawn him and as I'm seeing this go down I'm like oops I'm I'm like watching him more than I am the corner I get a little bit later than I should on the brakes myself and get my own penalty for cutting it just a little bit so after all these penalties and then it's like another one on lap 7 where it's again turn 7 I think so in all honesty my race piece was okay i mean it was just nowhere close to shane because he figured out the ford focus at just this massive end top end where you didn't just fly away with the top speed and not too many people were able to get their car figured out like that and i'm just sitting there struggling 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 and struggling trying to get this car to work and it's it's fine but again, it's just I'm doing these dumb penalties way more than I should. And because of that, I'm just slowly falling down the order until I finally get to about seventh place where I'm sticking with it. Yeah, there are points where, you know, got to go had that weird penalty issue where I'm able to get promoted to six and then Paven's got some issues. And I'm able to catch up. But in all honesty, at that point after then, uh, got to go, was able to catch back up to me, pass me with no issues. And then from there, I was just sitting in seventh, just trying to make sure that I'm keeping off the curbs if I can. And it was just, bleh. You'd think at some point that I would learn how to practice these Group B cars a little bit more than I currently am. Uh, because everybody else has got it figured out, and it's very evident that I don't. But at the end of the day, finishing 7th out of 11 people, it's not last place. It's not podium. It's not first. But, you know, it's respectable. So at this point, that's it for racing. That was all the races for this week. It's weirdly enough, I feel like that this is starting to become kind of like a vlog in a way about talking about what I've been doing with my life. Because at this point, uh, my wife and myself... Uh, start our lawn drive from western Wisconsin all the way over to eastern Wisconsin, taking a couple of stops in between west of Madison to check out some neat houses. And then we stop in Milwaukee to hang out for a day to ultimately go to Road America for the IndyCar race on Sunday. It was a great race as always. But then after then, we were able to go even further east with another fairly long drive to Port Sanilac, Sanilac in uh, Michigan, just a little bit north and east, I want to say, of Detroit to pick up a cat. His name's Gil Grissom. And then from there, we take an incredibly long journey back home 
So if you've gotten to this point of the video, I do apologize ahead of time if this is late or this is a little bit hastily put together because I I got home Monday night, so I'm surprised if I'm able to get this out by Tuesday. So again, if you've enjoyed all of this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, we'll have some more videos coming your way, so stay tuned for all that. Again, it's been great. It's been wonderful making these videos. So I hope you guys are enjoying them as much as I do. So again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.